Paddle to the Sea Chapter 1 How Paddle to the Sea Came to Be The Canadian wilderness was white with snow. From Lake Superior northward, the evergreen trees wore hoods and coats of white. A heavy blanket of cloud hung low across the hills. There was no sound. Nothing moved. Even a thread of gray smoke stood up like a pole keeping the sky from falling down on a log cabin in the valley. Then far off, a sound began, grew louder, louder, and swept overhead in a wild cackle of honks and cries. Geese, cried the Indian boy standing in the door of the cabin. They come back too soon. I must hurry to finish my paddle person. He returned to his bare robe by the fire where he had sat for many days whittling a piece of pine. Now he worked on in silence. He bent over the fire to melt lead in an iron spoon and poured it out to cool and harden in a hollow of the wood. He fastened a piece of tin to one end of the carving. Then he brought out oil paints and worked carefully with a brush, satisfied at last. The boy sat back on his heels. Before him lay a canoe one foot long. It looked like his father's big birch bark loaded with packs and supplies for a journey. Underneath was a tin rudder to keep it headed forward and a lump of lead for ballast. This would keep the canoe low in the water and turn it right side up after an upset. An Indian figure knelt just back of the middle, grasping a paddle, and along the bottom were carved these words. Please put me back in the water. I am Paddle to the Sea. Chapter 2. Long River Reaching to the Sea Next day the Indian boy climbed the hill back of his home. His snowshoes, wide as shovels, sank into the drifts at every step. When he reached the top, he took from his coat the canoe he had made. He then set it in the snow, facing southward, where, far away, a river cut an icy path through the forest. Now I will tell you something, said the boy to the little figure in the canoe. I have learned in school that when this snow in our Nipigon country melts, the water flows to that river. The river flows into the great lakes, the biggest lakes in the world. They are set like bowls on a gentle slope. The water from a river flows into the top one drops into the next, and on to the others. Then it makes a river again, a river that flows to the big salt water. I made you, Paddle Person, because I had a dream. A little wooden man smiled at me. He sat in a canoe on a snowbank on this hill. Now the dream has begun to come true. The sun spirit will look down at the snow. The snow will melt and the water will run downhill to the river, on down to the great lakes, down again, and on at last to the sea. You will go with the water, and you will have adventures that I would like to have. But I cannot go with you because I have to help my father with the traps. The time has come for you to sit on this snowbank and wait for the sun spirit to set you free. Then you will be a real paddle person, a real paddle to the sea. Chapter 
3. Paddle starts on his journey. At night, wood mice crept over the little canoe. White owls swooped low just to look at it. Rabbits hopped near. Two wolves came to sniff at Paddle. Then a wolverine and a weasel. Each morning when the boy went to make certain that Paddle was safe, he found the tracks in the snow but he knew that paddle could not be eaten because he was only painted wood. All this time, the world was changing. The air grew warmer. The birch twigs swelled with new buds. A moose pawed the snow beside a log, uncovering green moss and arbutus like tiny stars. And then, one morning, the gray clouds drifted from the sky. The sun burst out warm and bright above the hills, and under its glare the snow blankets drooped on the fir trees. Everywhere the snow was melting. There was a steady tap, tap, tap of fat drops falling. The snow bank began to settle under paddle. Next morning it had split wide open. Across a narrow, deep canyon in the snow, the canoe made a little bridge. But hour by hour, it tipped farther forward. The boy came running over the slippery ground. He was just in time to see the canoe slide down into rushing water. It sank and came to the surface upside down. Then it righted itself, and the watching boy saw it plunge forward leaping on the crest of a brook that dashed downhill. Ho! he called. You have started on your journey. Goodbye, paddle to the sea. 